Welcome back to the charismatic voice. Our brains are fascinating. And our brains on music are even more fascinating. I love how research is just beginning to show the immense benefits of music. And I'm going to wrap some of those benefits into this analysis today and first time listening ever to Paranoid by Black Sabbath. Let's get to it. Hey. So this particular reverb that I'm hearing on Ozzy's voice, it lends more mellowness to his sound, which is totally fascinating because I think that part of Ozzy's signature sound is this like cutting resonance. That it's so nasal, it's it pierces through any texture created by the band. And the way this has been put together, I mean, obviously we have a much older recording here, but this song is, it's 54 years old. <laughs> so uh, obviously this is going to be a much older, older recording style, but the, the choice of the reverb was almost like it wanted to temper that particular signature sound of Ozzy's. Yet because it is so forward and so bright, when you get that mellowness on it, it it, it, it still isn't losing the cut. It's more like it has just kind of like a, a little bit of a, a bubble that helps, uh, helps us be prepared <laughs> for the cut. Back to the beginning, there were some really, really cool riffs in here. I love the way that when this guitar first comes in, it it leaves us without a sense of where the time signature actually is. I, I can't tell you until the band comes in where a downbeat is. That's really cool. One other aspect really quickly to talk about with his voice, it is immediately present. There are lots of things that people don't like about Ozzy's voice. And I, I hear people, It's I think it's important to be subjective and and uh, consider the, the goods and the bads and then preferences as well. Uh, take in all of the information and, and make your own judgment. But ultimately, I like to really approach this as a, what information do we have before we make any sort of judgments after that? And I think we have this information of he can cut through anything. He is present right away. That voice just, boom, hits you from the first moment. He can get lyrics out like crazy, though I will say they're a little less clear with so much reverb on the sound. And he's got great pitch. He finds his pitch and he just like keeps going after it like crazy. A lot of people's pitch will waver a little bit at some point. Not Ozzy. He's like, I will mosquito that pitch home <laughs> the whole time. So much buzz. When you add all of those things up, even if so, the timbre, which is typically the, the thing that I hear most people saying they wouldn't like about Ozzy's voice, and some people love it, but the timbre, whichever way you lean on it, everything else about his voice adds up to wow. That's great. 
So let's go back just a little bit more here. Great mouth shapes. Wow. Actually, this is some of the more round timbre, I, or most rounded timbre I've heard from Ozzy. I think probably largely due to that verb, but. I think the fundamental sound also might be more round for him here. He might have gone more pointed later in his career. Uh, I want to come back to this really fascinating rhythmic pattern that's happening. So we've had this rhythm repeat a whole bunch in the vocal line. It is called a syncopated rhythm. What's happening is he starts the beginning of the phrase with the band and the other instruments on uh, a downbeat. So the beginning of this is sort of like the big beat that says, we start all here together and then we have some beats afterwards. Um, after that, there is a steady pulse that's maintained by the instruments. This one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yes, it is four, four time. And his vocal line then deviates and it starts to hit the offbeat. So if I'm going one, two, three, four, he's going ba, 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 ba. It's fascinating and it's emphasized by how good he is with that enunciation. Let's go back just a little bit. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. Did you feel the way when I was uh, saying the beats there, he was singing directly like at this half point in between. This is this syncopated singing. It makes it feel a little jarring. Um, that it, it feels like it's going against the grain of the music. And I'm sure that they're very deliberate in choosing that one more time. Ooh, going back to that feeling. Okay, let's talk about the brain here for a little bit. I like I like the way, can you help me occupy my brain? That's the line. Can you help me occupy my brain? Whoa. This, this song has fascinating lyrics. It, it definitely feels like it's, oh gosh, there's so many um, connotations that can go underneath, but there's a theme about mental health for sure. And I find this so fascinating that it is like woven into music because the more research that we do, the more we're discovering that music is so good for your brain. It is so good for it. It is used as treatment for things like anxiety and depression. I'm sure that like one of the answers to this song, can you help me occupy my brain? Yes. Um, I would like to help you occupy your brain with music because it will increase your brain capacity, your cognitive functions. All overall, uh, music is used to treat dementia and Alzheimer's. It improves your memory. It improves your mood. I love singing in particular has benefits of improving a lot of social relationships, which is just like, pff, really? It improved, I think that's so amazing. Singing also has been shown to light up areas of your brain that are just it's, it's like, oh, it's like Disneyland at Christmas time. Okay, it's just lit up everywhere. The brain loves music and it particularly loves singing. 
And this is one of the reasons why I feel so passionate about doing vocal research, because all of the research we're doing is a stepping stone for the next phase. Right now, the research that we're about to kickstart, if we haven't already kickstarted it, we're putting together a fund to fund vocal research, specifically looking at harsh vocals or distortion. So grit and growls, how that's created um, by different structures in the larynx. And that is, that's the foundation for other steps, like the fact that all of those nerves that are creating those sounds, those come, they're branching off from the vagus nerve, which goes into your processing center in your brain, into the emotional processing center. So we know that singing of all kinds is directly reporting back to your emotional processing center, but we don't know how much. And we are laying the foundation for that. I hope um, if, if you're interested in, in any sort of research, check out that Kickstarter. I think it'll be up by now. Um, it might be launching shortly. But yeah, if you're, if you're a vocal nerd like me, you're gonna dig it. <laughs> yes, I can! <laughs> Like, I wonder what this is doing to my brain right now. It's making it happy, that's for sure. <laughs> did, you, did you notice that syncopated rhythm in there again? I, it's, it, it is so predominant, and each time he says it, there are these consonants that are emphasizing it. I love uh, recently in one of our live chats or our live um, premieres, uh, someone mentioned that consonants are uh, essentially that they interrupt the vowels, which is exactly what happens. Consonants interrupt vowels. And so uh, since then, I've been thinking about how consonants are very, very rude, very rude. And they rudely interrupt that line every time on that syncopated moment. It's so good. <laughs> He has to really find that groove in there too. It's very specific. What is that sound in there? I swear I'm getting like a strange detuned buzzing on the right side. I hear the, the main of the solo on the left, and then there's this responsive buzzing. It's, I guess it, it's distortion, but it's not just distortion because there's a distinct pitch that is off. Honestly, a little cringy. Oh my gosh, that is so funky. We're gonna come back and listen to that again. It took me a bit to, to distinguish between the two sides. At first it kind of sounded like one sound, um, but the more I listen to it, the more I'm, I'm really noticing it. It feels like a separation of different pitches on one side, other side, almost like something about the particular processing that was put through it emphasized another set of pitches. Or, or maybe not, maybe that's something that was being done on the guitar. I don't know. I don't know. I'm fascinated by it though. It starts right there immediately when the solo starts going. It's almost like a harmonic was really heavily emphasized. <laughs> but I have to say that moment um there's like these pitches that aren't one that is detuned essentially continually going with the other one uh it it feels so cringy to me um it it makes me giggle. 
<laughs> but giggle like not just in like, ooh, I don't like that, but rather giggle in amazement at the physical sensations. I'm just like, feel like everything in me is tightening while that's happening in my ears. It's hilarious. It reminds me a little bit actually of the first time I heard a woman do harsh vocals. That was Tati in Ginger Pisces. She's such a fabulous person, by the way. I can't believe from hearing her to now, and I've met her and talked with her about so many different things, interviewed her on the channel, um, hoping someday that maybe she'll let me steady her voice. <laughs> so, um, the, I think that when I first heard her, I I was giggling incessantly because like there was a part of me that was cringing, but just another part that was so excited and astonished that a person can make a sound like that. <laughs> so much fun. So right now, I there's this absolute astonishment that that we've left in this sound that's like so in battle with the main line from the guitar. <laughs> I like that line. That there was a line in here that felt so human. I'm gonna rewind back to it and then I swear I'll keep going and, and let the song actually roll a little bit longer so we don't lose the entire impression of it. But what was it? Make a joke and I will sigh and you will laugh and I will cry. It's a I I feel like it so perfectly addresses when when I really want somebody to take me seriously or I'm taking something very seriously and somebody else makes a joke of it and you're like, oh, come on. There's just like this disappointment that happens in there. Oh, it, right, that's something I don't, I don't think AI is going to capture anytime soon. There's, it's just, that was such a human lyric, right? Whoa, like, wow, I feel very seen by that line. Here it is. That's a great line. Wow. Just, I, I think it's fascinating how we have this juxtaposition of music that feels upbeat and driving. It's almost like the way that paranoid, it, like that is a very often upbeat, heart is beating faster idea. <laughs> the, the definition of upbeat, the heart is beating faster. And uh, juxtaposed against that are these lyrics that are just heavy. What? Happiness, I cannot feel like he's describing depression to the T right there. Love to me is so unreal. It's just, gosh, it's it's such a, a challenging uh, thing. I, I think especially for our generation, there, I, I think people are be just barely beginning to grasp how dangerous depression is to every individual and society, and they they already caught it in this music video in a, a brilliant way. But then put it against paranoid as if like the world just keeps going at this pace and this person just almost can't even relate to it at times. It's just, this song sparks a lot of deep thoughts and a lot of excitement about vocal research and brains. <laughs> Wow, can't enjoy life. Whoa, check it out. 
check out the link in our pinned comments and also in the video description to learn more about that vocal research Kickstarter. And I'm also going to link you over here to some of the research we've already done, including this amazing description that one of the doctors gives about all of those nerves inside your larynx. Keep in mind that those all go back to your emotional processing center where I hope that you will fall more in love with music every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs>